Today, let's delve into a book published in March 2023 titled Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity. The second author of this book is Bill Gifford, a journalist specializing in health reporting, possibly making the book more readable. However, the primary author is Peter Atiyah. Atiyah, born in 1973, graduated from Stanford University Medical School, worked as a resident at Johns Hopkins Hospital, and initially excelled as a surgeon. Later, he resigned to join McKinsey and Company, and now he has embarked on entrepreneurial ventures and longevity projects. His approach aligns well with my temperament. During his time as a surgeon, Atia once treated a 17-year-old who had been stabbed in the heart. The situation was critical, and the conventional procedures would likely take too long. In a bold move, Atia decided to open the chest and relieve the pressure on the heart directly. Although unconventional and against regulations, it worked, and the patient was discharged in four days. Atia not only possesses a keen sense of risk assessment, but also has a remarkable proficiency in mathematics. He once developed a mathematical model to precisely calculate the administration time for a severely leukemia-afflicted patient in the intensive care unit. 4.30 a.m. Following the model, the patient responded well, but Atia faced severe criticism from superiors for not adhering to the standard procedures. Events like this eventually led Atia to believe that people in the hospital were too conventional and resistant to innovation, prompting him to resign and join McKinsey. Initially tasked with medical affairs at McKinsey, they later noticed his strong mathematical skills and risk understanding, redirecting him to research financial risks. The surprising outcome occurred in the summer of 2007, when Atia accurately predicted the financial crisis. After the financial crisis, Nassim Taleb's The Black Swan gained popularity, discussing risk, but according to Atia, the medical field still lacks a comprehensive risk awareness. This issue is critical. In summary, Atia has returned to the health sector, this time focusing on longevity rather than disease treatment. I appreciate Atia's assertive intellectual attitude. Starting from first principles, he seeks to understand the essence of the matter and formulates his own opinions. If you can't convince him, he won't change, and he might even change you. Atia possesses not only medical knowledge, and clinical experience, but also mathematical skills from his consulting background. A rare combination. However, these experiences alone don't fully showcase Atiyah's capabilities. The real testament to his prowess is this book. It's not just a guide on how to live longer. It's a revolutionary manifesto for the entire healthcare system. While today's healthcare system is undoubtedly advanced, Atiyah argues that it lacks hope. The last book we interpreted was Random Acts of Medicine by Jenna and Worsham, where heart disease was frequently discussed. One indicator we frequently used was the mortality rate within 30 days of patient admission. Regardless of the classification, the mortality rate remained above 10%. If the patient is fortunate, they may be saved through surgery. But what happens after being saved? What kind of quality of life is that? Perhaps they will live a few more years or it could be just a few more months, with the illness still potentially recurring at any moment. For patients, what truly matters is not how skilled the doctor's surgical techniques are. This is because cardiovascular issues don't arise only at the moment of a heart attack. It's a result, with the root cause often being atherosclerosis. If your arteries already have atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease is inevitable, and interventions like medications, stents, or bypass surgeries are merely addressing the symptoms, not the root cause. Atherosclerosis could have started decades before the onset of symptoms, yet the current healthcare system intervenes only after a heart attack, essentially treating symptoms, not the fundamental issue. Some diseases indeed allow for comprehensive treatment. For instance, a young person with a broken bone from playing sports, or someone infected with a virus or bacteria, or someone injured in a fight. Hospital treatment in these cases can lead to complete recovery. These are significant achievements of modern medicine. Modern medicine has studied these acute diseases quite extensively. Atia categorizes the history of medicine into two phases. The first is Medicine 1.0, symbolized by Hippocrates, the ancient Greek physician. Although Hippocrates separated medicine from magic and philosophy, 
Medicine 1.0 was still based on direct observation and experience, lacking a scientific foundation. Traditional Chinese medicine could also be considered Medicine 1.0, with its occasional effectiveness, especially in orthopedics. No matter how intelligent or diligent a Medicine 1.0 doctor is, they lack specific remedies. It wasn't until the mid-19th century, with the advent of the germ theory, that Medicine 2.0 emerged. Applying scientific methods, medicine began a steady progression. However, the breakthrough that transformed medicine into a genuinely effective discipline came in the 1930s, with the discovery and synthesis of penicillin. Penicillin was a life-saving antibiotic, and Medicine 2.0 systematically increased human lifespan. Combined with an understanding of viruses, disease prevention, and vaccine development, Medicine 2.0 significantly improved human health. From the late 19th century to today, human life expectancy has almost doubled. However, the most significant contribution of 2.0 was antibiotics. The graph depicting changes in the death rate from 1900 to the present shows a nearly 50% reduction in mortality by 1950 compared to 1900. Still, removing deaths from the eight major infectious diseases reveals that the overall mortality rate, represented by the white curve, did not decrease significantly, especially in recent decades. This indicates that the life improvement brought by Medicine 2.0 primarily resulted from using antibiotics and improving sanitary conditions to control infectious diseases. In other words, over a century ago, most deaths were due to some acute cause, like injury or infection which Medicine 2.0 successfully addressed. Now, most people can live into their 70s or 80s, but they primarily die from chronic diseases, something Medicine 2.0 struggles to manage effectively. Atiyah refers to the four leading chronic diseases causing the most deaths today as the four horsemen, paralleling the biblical representation of pestilence, war, famine, and death in the four horsemen of the apocalypse. 1. Heart disease. 2 cancer. 3. Neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, i.e., dementia in old age. 4. Type 2 diabetes. One of them may come knocking sooner or later. It's challenging no matter who you encounter. Despite vast resources invested annually in these diseases, modern medicine has made some progress, such as the effectiveness of coronary artery bypass surgery. Still, its impact is limited. While we hope new longevity drugs will enable people to live to 120, fundamental breakthroughs in addressing the four horsemen are essential. Atiyah believes that Medicine 2.0's approach to tackling the four horsemen is fundamentally flawed, because it always intervenes after the disease has manifested. Take type 2 diabetes, for example. The American Diabetes Association standard is to diagnose and treat diabetes when a patient's hemoglobin A1c level reaches 6.5%. Doctors can prescribe drugs to raise insulin levels, lower blood sugar, or administer insulin directly. However, by the time diabetes is diagnosed, the person has already been unhealthy for many years. The same applies to the other three horsemen. How many people in this world are already unhealthy, but haven't experienced symptoms yet? This brings to mind Dan Heath's book Upstream, advocating for preventive measures rather than waiting for symptoms to appear. While Heath's book mainly focuses on upstream thinking in business and management, Atiyah's Outlive finally addresses upstream thinking in medicine. The emphasis is on intervening before symptoms appear, preventing, or at least delaying the onset of the four horsemen. Treating the root cause rather than waiting until atherosclerosis is severe to address the disease. Originally, Heath used a story, possibly from South African Archbishop Desmond Tutu, where two people downstream see children floating down the river. They rescue one, but as soon as they save one, another comes along. Eventually, one of them says, I'll go upstream to see who is throwing the children in. Atia also presented a similar anecdote. During his medical school days, he dreamt of someone tossing eggs from a building, and his task was to catch those eggs. Sometimes he succeeded, sometimes he didn't, and the eggs broke. Atiyah thought, isn't this what doctors do? Patients come to me in a perilous state, sometimes I can save them, sometimes I can't. However, the crucial question is, who is throwing the eggs? 
addressing the root cause is essential. Acute illnesses are accidental, occurring at any age, and Medicine 2.0 is adept at handling them. However, chronic four horsemen diseases are inevitable risks that come with aging, and Medicine 2.0 struggles to manage them effectively. After a certain age, the decline in health can be divided into three dimensions. A decrease in physical function caused by the four horsemen, cognitive decline, and deteriorating emotional well-being. These functions don't necessarily decline simultaneously. Sometimes cognitive abilities degrade earlier than physical function, and emotional health might start declining in middle or even younger age. Altogether, most people spend their last 10 years in poor conditions. The title of Atiyah's book, Outlive, suggests living longer than expected, but the focus is on living healthily. Atiyah introduces the concept of Medicine 3.0 which differs from 2.0 in four aspects. 1. Emphasis on prevention rather than treatment. 2. Viewing each patient as a unique individual, as responses to different nutrients vary. 3. Intervening from a risk management perspective, rather than following fixed procedures. 4. Pursuing not only lifespan, but also healthspan. The graph illustrates the current situation. The horizontal axis represents the average expected lifespan, and the vertical axis represents healthspan. Without medical intervention, around the age of 50, healthspan begins to decline significantly. While Medicine 2.0's interventions have a minimal impact on healthspan, they can extend lifespan somewhat in the final stages. The goal of Medicine 3.0 is to systematically shift the entire curve to the right. Not just prolonging lifespan but extending healthspan, and delaying the decline in health until the last few years of life. Atiyah optimistically believes that existing knowledge and means could potentially add 10 to 20 healthy years to human life. You might wonder why you haven't heard about this. Indeed, a distinctive feature of this book is its use of cutting edge knowledge. Atiyah's insights into nutrition, for example, differ from those of many nutritionists in the market. His research is extensive, drawing from five primary sources. 1. Systematic studies of centenarians. 2. Animal experiments. 3. The latest medical understanding of the four horsemen. 4. Understanding aging mechanisms at the cellular level. 5. Natural randomized experiments. Research in these areas is continually advancing each year but few individuals can systematically consolidate the results and present them comprehensively. This book is undoubtedly a treasure trove of new knowledge. But Atiyah doesn't just stop at summarizing. He takes action. His health strategy addresses five aspects. Exercise, nutrition, sleep, emotional health, and medication. We'll explore each one. In the next section, we will talk about the secrets of longevity. If you feel there is value in this, please like, subscribe to this channel, and leave your thoughts or suggestions in the comments section. Let's grow together and read more good books.